This is our Western or Plains Hognose Snake Hazel, and I just had her do a target training session. She ate, and I did a total complete enclosure clean out and substrate change, which I don't do on our snakes that often, maybe every six months to a year, do I totally take 100% of everything out and clean it and, and change the substrate. Usually I'll spot clean and I'll take enclosure furnishings out a few at a time and clean them and then wipe down any messy areas on the walls in a spot cleaning type of method so that I'm not taking away all of their familiar scents and pheromones. But about once a year or sometimes twice a year, I completely strip everything. And today was the day for Hazel. There she is. She was hatched, we think, in 2014, which would make her nine years old this year, but we aren't 100% certain of her age. We are 100% certain of her sex because we had her genetic sex determination test done through Rare Genetics Inc. by sending in a shed skin, and she is female. I just wanted to show you her enclosure. It's two levels, and she's got two, three water dishes. She doesn't really need three, but she's always had that one and seems to like it, especially when she's shedding, she rubs against it. And sometimes she gets inside that one. This is the one I mainly see her drink out of. And then this one is something she can get underneath. And so I fill it up with water because why not? She's got two humid hides, one on the top level and one on this lower level. And then this is an example I wanted to show you guys of how I make a substrate box. So this box has holes on both sides and on the ends. And it's got a different type of substrate inside it than what is in the rest of her habitat. So the rest of her habitat has reptile soil. And it's really moist when you first put it in. And if you need to keep it moist for a snake that needs high humidity, you can easily dump water in it and it works out great. I really like it. But you can let it dry out once you put it in there, and then it's just like dry dirt. So she has aspen bedding in this substrate box, and it's super thick. I've probably got two or three inches of aspen bedding in there for her to burrow in, and it's 100% dry. So if she wants a super dry microclimate that she can burrow and tunnel in, that is what that substrate box is for. And the rest of her area has a variety of water features, rocks, different types of hides from plastic to cardboard and to humid hides. She's got some fake um, plants in here. The rocks and the soil are real. She has a log there that's hollow that she can go inside. And then she has a real branch here that she can rub against. I often find shed on there when she's going through an ecdesis cycle. So she has a wide variety of things. And usually what I do is let some of this soil dry out. So she does have access to dry spaces within her enclosure, but the soil around her water dish, I usually let the water overflow when I fill it. So it stays moist. And she does have perching, which she occasionally uses. I've seen her hanging down off that perch before. And there is a perch inside this substrate box. It's a real low level perch. It's about halfway up the vertical space of this box from one diagonal corner to the other. It's just another thing that she can be on and use. And her enclosure is a four foot long by two foot deep by 18 inch high enclosure. Western hognose snakes are in the family Colubridae. They're endemic to North America and they have an upturned nose for burrowing and they have keeled scales, which means that the scales are rough, just like a rough scale python or um, a rattlesnake or a bull snake or something else in the Pituophis genus like a pine snake or gopher snake. Hognose snakes eat a lot of amphibians in the wild. If you're curious what we feed Hazel, she eats mice, rats, quail, chick heads, and fish. She also eats reptilinks, 